there is a title fight in that lightweight division between Michael Chandler and Charles Oliveira. How do you see that one playing out? Ooh, I like that fight a lot. Um, yeah, Michael Chandler, man, what way to burst on the scene. I mean, he was incredible in his last fight. And obviously, I think we knew he was capable of it. But it's another thing to be capable and and to deliver. And the way that he delivered in such with such a statement really kind of... It took away any questions I think that we could have about how can he do under that that pressure and those lights. Um, so Michael Chandler and Charles Oliveira, and Charles has got that really slick ground game. He'll be the guy that's not afraid to go to the ground, right? And kind of elusive on the feet. So um, I always like to give a more recent, uh, I always like to go back and watch film before I give like a solid, solid breakdown. But um, maybe like an early pick right now. I'm kind of liking Michael Chandler in this fight, you know, um, but I'm a huge fan of Charles Oliveira. He is incredible. It's his finishes that he's gotten and his striking. He's good in every area, but um, maybe I'm just kind of like still wowed by what what Michael Chandler was able to do. And it's, it's always easy to get swept away in that a little bit because you see somebody deliver such an amazing performance. You're kind of like, how could you not be on that guy? And he's just such a likable person, too. Yeah. That's a hard one. I, I really don't know. Uh, they both have their good points. Uh, Michael Chandler's a veteran. He's been around. He's, I mean, he's proven he's world class. He's proven that he can, he can beat anybody. You know, he's proven that. Except the ego. Nobody can beat the ego. But then, regardless, but he, he's, he's a world class athlete and uh, mentally strong with a good camp. Charles Oliveras is on a great win streak. He's well-rounded. He's, he's good everywhere. Man, I don't know. It's kind of one of those fights when you have people like that. If I'm not physically training them, I don't really know exactly. I'm I'm just a fan like everybody else and I can just think, okay, if this happened, this happened, this happened, this can happen. Yeah. And then you go out there because you're not in camp with them. You don't see it day in, day out. You go, oh, that ain't going to happen. Well, I'll give you a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Uh, Kamaro Usman, he trained with the Habib camp at some of his training camp. So I was watching the champ train, you know, and sparring and, and, the, and hitting mitts with the guys. And I'm like going, oh, my gosh. If people were thinking the last guy was good, wait till they see this guy because yeah. he really jumped up. He really jumped up. And that's what I'm talking about. As a coach, if we're training our guys and we see, we can tell you more or less. But if we're not watching our guys and I'm watching and you're watching TV, your opinion might be just better than mine. Unless we're in there training the guys, that's where the difference comes. I see, you know, I see a finish as well. Uh, um, Michael's got dynamite in his hands. For his weight class, he's so, so strong, so explosive. So it's going to be good. Um, and you know he he's put in work for years, like decades actually. You know, so I'm I'm so happy for him and his family. I think I'm going to give the give it to Chandler. I think uh, Chandler's a, they're both both great fighters. Uh, Charles is a, he's a great fighter, but I think uh, just the explosiveness and, and you know obviously that wrestling background and all that. I don't think uh, the jujitsu will be will be an issue. Uh, so I think uh, Chandler Chandler will get it done. Yeah, that's good. That's a really good one because. Uh, you know, I didn't think Oliveira was... I mean, I knew he was good, but I didn't know he was that good. And then when he killed Tony Ferguson, that was like an eye-opener for me. Um, man, it's a tough one. Actually, I feel like Michael has an advantage on his feet, and I feel like he has an advantage with the wrestling where he would be able to keep it in the standing position. Um, um, that division is interesting, too, because uh, I think they said Poirier bypassed the title shot yeah. to fight Conor again, which is like... Dana said that was a great move. And I think, like, oh, man, that shows kind of um, the flaws in the system of mixed martial arts. From a competitive architecture point, uh, you know, if, if you're competing in something, you always want to get to the top of it. But here's someone saying, like, well, I don't really want to get to the top because I want to go make more money over here at a point which is not the top, right? And so, like, to me, and I don't want to disrespect Oliver because he's won eight in a row and he's, he's great, right? But I think Michael versus Dustin is a more interesting fight than Michael versus Oliveira is. I really like Michael Chandler, and he's, you know, it looks good getting fresh meat in the division, but I I think uh, Charles Oliveira, you know, he didn't have a great run at 145, uh, and he's always done well at 155, so I, I'd like to see him, you know, kind of have this resurgence and, and maybe make it to, you know, get the title fight or, or win the title, so... To, to see him make you know come full circle, I'd, I'd be super proud of him for that. Another title fight coming right up: Michael Chandler versus Charles Oliveira. How do you see that one playing out? Uh, who? Michael Chandler versus Charles Oliveira. Who's that? I never heard of them. They fight? 
Are they fighting the UFC? Lightweight division, yeah. Lightweight division. I don't know. I've never heard of those guys before. Well, Michael Chandler was from Bellator, just made his UFC debut, beat Dan Hooker. Charles Oliveira just beat Tony Ferguson. I heard about that hooker before. Is she still a hooker? 